Cops involved in fatal shooting of three men in East Kingston detained. The High Command of the Jamaica Constabulary Force, JCF, has instructed that two police officers involved in the fatal shooting of three men in East Kingston earlier this week be detained by the Independent Commission of Investigation to Indicom continues its probe into the incident. The detention was ordered based on information received according to a JCF news release on Thursday morning. The incident which occurred on the morning of November 10, 2024 involved two members of the Kingston East Division. The cops reported that while on patrol they encountered a group of men along Windward Road and during the encounter gunfire was exchanged resulting in the death of three men. One of the cops sustained a non-life-threatening injury and two illegal firearms were reported recovered from the scene. It was also initially reported that the now deceased men were suspect to be involved in a robbery ring. According to a release, the High Command reiterates its full support of members who act within the law in the execution of their duties and is committed to the principle of accountability. The High Command wishes to assure the public of our commitment to support thorough and impartial investigations carried out by Indicom ensuring that the ends of justice are served, the release stated, adding, we remain steadfast in our pursuit of professionalism, transparency, and will continue to cooperate fully with the relevant oversight bodies in this and any other such matters. JLP mourning sudden death of sitting councillor Christopher Towson. Minister of Local Government and Deputy Leader of the Governing Jamaica Labour Party, JLP Desmond McKenzie, has expressed regret at the death of counsel for the Olympic Gardens Division in St. Andrew, West Central, Christopher Towson. The usually soft-spoken, long-serving counsel died suddenly on Wednesday night for what is being believed to be a natural cause. In a release on Thursday morning, Mackenzie said, The JLP is deeply saddened by the passing of Towson. We are shocked at news of the death of counsel Towson. He had served the people of the Olympic Gardens Division with distinction for a long time, and provided critical support to the Member of Parliament and our party leader, Dr. Andrew Holness, stated Mackenzie. Council Towson was an outstanding representative who was fierce, dedicated to service and advance in the interests of people he served. He has no doubt made a positive contribution to the local government fraternity in Jamaica, added Mackenzie. He said the JLP expressed its deep condolences to the Council Towson family, friends and colleagues following the tragic development which the party is currently struggling to come to terms with. Our party intends to offer our support to Councillor Towson's family and I have no doubt that at the appropriate time his contribution to the local government fraternity in Jamaica will be duly and appropriately recognized, added Mackenzie. In the meantime, in a post on social site X, Holness, who has worked with St. Andrew Western Central constituency with Towson for several years, said people in the area are having a sad day as they mourn his passing. In this time of sorrow, our heart goes out to Towson family, who are left shattered by this tremendous loss. I pray that God's grace strengthens them and gives them peace and comfort as they process this painful news stated wholeness. The Prime Minister said Towson was a steadfast counsellor and advocate who poured his heart and soul into representing the people of Olympic Gardens. He was dedicated to the community and his leadership impacted many lives, Today, we remember him as a representative of the people, a friend, a pillar of our community. Rest well, Thousand. Your legacy will be cherished, added Holness. Warmington wants government to assume responsibility for roads and housing schemes. Member of Parliament for St. West St. Catherine, Edward Warmington, has tabled a motion in the lower house seeking to have government assume responsibility for roads and housing schemes across the island. Mr. Warmington noted, that the roads in most housing schemes are in deplorable conditions. Many of these roads were constructed over 60 years ago when the schemes were developed and have deteriorated over time. Mr. Warmington's motion called for government to rehabilitate scheme roads when funds are available. The MP also wants ownership of roads and common area in new housing developments to be automatically transferred to local authorities for maintenance. And where successive governments at the central and local level I refuse to assume responsibility for these infrastructures, and where such actions by government result in severe difficulties and suffering for Jamaicans living in these housing schemes, 
And where are these residents are taxpayers, and most of them are poor, less fortunate Jamaicans, be it resolved that this parliament calls on the government to immediately assume responsibility for all road infrastructures in housing schemes throughout Jamaica, and when funds are available, commence the necessary repairs and rehabilitation needed to bring all these roads into proper and suitable and usable condition. And be it further resolved that in all further developments, a condition for development, de de developmental approval is that at the time of the issuance of the first title to homeowners, the title to all road infrastructure and common areas be transferred to the local government, Kingston St. Andrew Municipal Corporation, or any other local authority, including but not limited to the National Works Agency, in order that such entity can exercise the right of ownership in inclusive of maintenance. Jamaica makes history with first export of locally produced medical grade oxygen. Jamaica has made history with an inaugural export of locally produced medical grade oxygen. The landmark shipment with 16 tons of liquid medical grade oxygen departed from the island on November 9 and is destined for the Bahamas. The shipment was made by Massey Gas Product Jamaica under its IGL brand. In a statement, Massey said the achievement positions Jamaica as an emerging healthcare leader in the region and marks a significant step in the country's journey towards economic resilience and self-reliance. Minister of Industry, Investment and Commerce, Senator Auburn Hill welcomed the development, while noting that it reflects the country's commitment to increasing exports and boosting the economy. Senator Hill urged other businesses to follow Massey's example and seek out opportunities for export to new markets. For the more than two years I've been at the Ministry of Industry, Investment and Commerce, I have been really carrying forward the push to export a lot more from Jamaica. That Massey, which is a big company from our neighbor, Trinidad, but listed on the Jamaica Stock Exchange, has come to Jamaica, established its business here, expanded by buying other businesses, is now exporting as it was one of my requests to the owners and proprietors when they came, that they must look to export from Jamaica. I am very, very pleased that here is another big company now looking to take on markets overseas because that's the only way Jamaica is going to really grow and get to be a much more wealthy country. As we go on and export a lot more, we have only 3 million people, a relatively uh, low per capita GDP, and so to raise that um, wealth factor, we have to export a lot more to wealthier countries that can buy our products. Congrats to Massey and the team that um, have been doing this in Jamaica, and I encourage other companies to look uh, overseas to new markets and, and follow the example of Massey. Rifle found on the pile of stones in Old Harbor and operation by the police in Old Harbor St. Catherine led to the discovery of a rifle under a pile of stones on Wednesday. The weapon seized is a Chinese SKS rifle. Police reports state that about 8.45 a.m., police went onto a targeted operation in Old Harbor, and during a search, the weapon was retrieved from a hole which was covered with stones. No arrest was made. The Old Harbor Criminal Investigations Branch is probing the matter. Fake doctor arrested for alleged visa fraud. A man who purported to be a medical doctor and allegedly fraudulent collection of money to provide a U.S. visa has been arrested and charged. The accused has been identified as Andrew Clark, a 57-year-old laborer of Spring Farm St. James. Clark is answering to charges of authoring forged documents, obtaining money by false pretense, and possession of a forged document. It is alleged that on November 7, the complainant visited the Spanish Town Hospital, where he was informed by Clark that he was a medical doctor at the institution. The complainant was reportedly told that Clark could secure a U.S. visa for him at a cost of $200,000. The accused and the complainant allegedly met again sometime after at the hospital, where Clark collected the agreed sum. A report was made to the Spanish Town Police after the term agreed for the delivery of the visa elapsed and the complainant was unable to get in touch with Clark. The accused was arrested at the Spanish Town Hospital, where he was allegedly found, with identification suggesting he worked at the Southeast Regional Health Authority. Checks made by investigators reportedly reveal 
that Crack was not a medical doctor. A date is being finalized for his court appearance. Remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell for daily updates.